Hey guys, Jay, welcome back to the channel. So honestly guys, it's been quite some time since I've been to an actual comic convention. I used to go to comic book conventions, I used to go to anime conventions, heck, I used to go to any geek related conventions, including literary conventions. And now, that Comic Con 2021 is going to be San Diego Comic Con at home once again. I was feeling really, well, nostalgic and wanted to sort of go back and remember what it was like to go out at a Comic Con, just deal with everybody shoulder to shoulder, trying to grab those exclusives. Man, that was freaking ridiculous. All of the wonderful exhibits and, of course, some of the amazing premieres that were happening only at San Diego Comic Con. Guys, I hope you join me in looking back at the time I visited San Diego Comic Con 2019. All right, guys, so <laughs> this one's going to be a bit of a long one, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Grab your favorite drink, get ready, because it's going to be a wild ride. All right, guys, let's get started. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Who is that guy? Oh, man. You just would not recognize me right now. That's crazy. I remember that guy. I remember that guy. Oh, you know what, guys? Just before we get started, I do want to say, just before we got on the plane, I was uh, having a conversation with my friend uh, David. I was like, hey, David, have you ever gotten bumped up to business class? And, you know, David being nice, he flies all the time. He goes all over the world. And he said, you know what, Jay? Yeah, I've been up bumped up to business class. And I was like, wow, what's that like? And he's like... You know, Jay, it's 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 a lot of fun. You know, it, it, you get a little bit more leg room. It's 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 nice. You know, a little bit more privacy. It's actually really great. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I said, what about the food? He's like, oh yeah, the food's great too. I'm like, awesome. And then this happened. So this is my annual trip down to San Diego, and uh, for the first time, oh. uh, I got upgraded. Which I forgot. <laughs> it was San Diego Comic Con. 50th anniversary. They actually made the big 5-0 just before the lockdowns happened. It's amazing. There's a lot more legroom. I'll tell you how much right now. And uh, <laughs> just like last year, uh, it looks like... Yeah, we got we got bumped up the first to uh, to business class. It was pretty. No, no, sorry, it wasn't business class. Sorry, it wasn't business class. It was economy plus. We got bumped up to economy plus. It was pretty cool. Look how much more room I have now. This is. It doesn't look like much room, much but trust me, Thank you, it is a yeah, heck of a lot more room. We'll be touching down in Los Angeles, then driving all the way to um, uh, San Diego, and from there, picking up our passes. The, ch and, uh, the flights were just cheaper to fly all the way to um, Los Angeles, in, uh, and then, uh, Los then Angeles drive and to, uh, to San Diego. To pick up our car. And then it's about, I think, a uh, three or four hour drive to uh, San Diego. Three or four hour drive. Uh, but, uh, but you know what? Having good friends and good company continues, made for a made for a wonderful trip, okay, to be honest so with you. We finally made it to San Diego. Uh, and pretty decent it was room. just a dude's room, man. It was it Very was nice. it was all over the place. Dex has claimed his spot. He all he he basically said, "This is and, this is my man, sleeping area. View. Nobody else touches it." So uh, a great view of the highway, <laughs> but. At the same time, it's got a pretty... They had a pool, awesome man! Pool. They had a pool! It was really so cool awesome. So Look at those palm trees. Half an hour, we're going to head off to... Facing the highway, though. That was that was probably the only the only thing that was kind of weird. But, you know what? It was still great. So, back onto the shuttle bus we go. So, I have to admit... And about a half an hour ride onto the San Diego Express. I have to admit, the shuttles that San Diego Comic-Con provides are incredible. No complaints whatsoever. What a wonderful... It's a logistical service. Holy crap! They're all chartered. They're all chartered buses. The seats are 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 wonderfully comfortable. Just great. Gets you to a hotel and back in literally less than ten minutes. Well, okay, maybe it was more like twenty minutes, but still, amazing ride. So these are all my friends. Uh, the one the one in front, directly in front of me, that's David, who uh, you know helped us to get. Uh, those Economy Plus seats, which was awesome. We got bumped up. Uh, we just saw my friend um, Jordan. Awesome guy. Hopefully one day he'll, uh, he'll he'll get on the show. This is the lineup to get into Hall C, where all of the premieres happen at San Diego Comic-Con. People literally camp out the night before to try and get into Hall C for the premieres. 
I believe that year it was the premiere of um, just before Endgame. I think it was. I think it was. Uh, no, I think it was Endgame. Yeah, that was the premiere of Endgame at the time. It's pretty crazy. There you go. People are already camping out just to get into Hall C. Holy crap! It was just insane. We're just we're, we're walking from where the bus dropped us off all the way to the comic convention. Nobody ever knows. Even though we know to go to the pavilion, nobody knows what entrance to go to. <laughs> I'm just making a little bit of a joke because they keep moving the um, the ticket area where you have to uh, the admissions area. They keep moving it place to place every year. So that year was upstairs in the pavilion. So we're heading up to the Comic Con registration area to go pick, pick up our badges. I'm really excited for, uh, <laughs> uh, David, always the uh, Joker. Chris, uh, the Dark Crystal uh, Netflix series. I want to see it. Jordan, our one of our crew, was not able to register this year, so we basically asked a huge favor of the staff here. And you know what? The bottom line is. If you're good to people, I think good things will happen to you. So Jordan's in, and we're about to pick up the rest of our boxes. <laughs> Let's go. Jordan was in, wasn't able to get his pass on time, so we actually ended up asking so, the staff for those of you who don't know, very, very nicely like, to like gra to, to let Jordan grab his pass Jordan, at the show. Now, you got to understand, you actually can't register at the show. It's not allowed. So the staff there were hugely, hugely amazing, and they let, jo they let Jordan register right there. It was, it was awesome. This is really cool because I've never seen them before. So, wherever you go in Comic Con, you have to actually scan in to get into the convention. And your badge actually has this QR, this, uh, QR code or the. I um, um, can't remember what they're called now. They're, they're, they're little um, tags that actually uh, have a little bit of information to, to say that you are in the building and you're out of the building. It's crazy. So, the show floor is just about to open up. And they're. I think it was 9 o'clock. So. Sorry, six o'clock. <laughs> six o'clock in the afternoon. This is preview day. So yeah, six o'clock in the afternoon is when they open the, the show floor. And watch this, guys. Jordan's holding my camera right now. Watch what happens. There we go. David and I took off. <laughs> Try to see if you can if you can spot us. We literally took off. Dex and and Dex and Jordan were left in the dust. <laughs> it was hilarious. So welcome to Comic Con, guys. Look at this place. Oh my gosh, this is only preview day. If it's this pi if if it was this busy on preview day, imagine what the show floor looked like on a regular show day. It was insane. See the Lego exhibits there. That was awesome. So the reason David and I are actually rushing is because and a lot of times when you're when you're at Comic-Con, if you're going to go get some exclusives, we're here at the Mattel booth and they've come strong with Masters of the Universe this year. I can't believe how much Masters of the Universe is actually it's a whole booth. They get She-Ra and Masters of the Universe is ridiculous. So She-Ra and the Princesses of Power uh, was just premiering that year. And they were showing off the brand new at the time Masters of the Universe origin series. It was crazy. Look who it is. Oh, it is the it is He Man. Gigantic He Man. Holy crap. Look at the size of this guy. It's huge. <laughs> Jordan didn't know the difference between Tr Prince Adam and He Man. It was it was precious. It was so great. Oh my gosh. So, I, I had to take a shot with He-Man. Had to do it. Had to do it. Oh my gosh. Loved it. So, looks like we're headed over to the... Oh! There he is, guys. This was... What an experience to be able to see Unicron for the very first time. I mean, like, yeah, I've got him in my home now. 
but you have no idea the experience of actually seeing Unicron for the absolute very first time behind glass. It, 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 was, it, was, it was a crazy experience. Everybody was going nuts. Imagine this gigantic orb in one case and then the full transformed robot in the other side. It was insane. Now, you can see here on the prototype, the Maw is the perfect color. The final, the final product, unfortunately, uh, kind of fell short, which was unfortunate. Six seventy-five. At the time, I was thinking to myself, I would never be able to afford it. I could never, you know, put the money together. Somehow, somehow, we made it happen. The crowds were just insane. This was the Doctor Who booth from the BBC. So we saw the new Doctor. Some makeup schools that were exhibiting their new techniques. Uh, I think they were actually doing Hellboy's uh, makeup here, which was awesome. Yeah, just a sea of people. Won't be having that. Won't be seeing that anytime soon. It really was quite the experience just to be a Comic Con. Check out all of the samurai DC heroes. They looked incredible. Superman, Green Arrow. On the other side here, there's Robin. And of course, the Batman. <laughs> I wasn't really sure what this was. They, um, I think that the, they hadn't finished setting up. See the, see the pagodas there, the, the, the stands? They actually had no products there, so we didn't really know exactly what this was supposed to be. Here's the Flash. And right behind him is Harlequin. It was incredible. There is the almighty Funko booth. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Toki Doki. Small little uh, Japanese themed collectibles. Pretty cool. This is only one small section of the of the convention floor. The convention goes on and on and on. This is the DC section. This is the DC area. Full DC booth. Wow, the tumbler. Now this is just an exhibit. I don't think that that was screen used, but you can see just how big it was compared to um, the Catwoman stand-in. I said it a couple times since I was here before, but. We really don't have anything quite like this in Toronto. I mean, Fan Expo is big, don't get me wrong. Fan Expo is a really, really big phenomenon in Toronto. But you really have no idea what it is to experience Comic Con until you're here. My friends Jordan and Dex are here, and let's just say sensory overload has taken over everybody right now. It's just insane the kind of things that we've, we're seeing this year. The other thing is that, unlike past years, there's a lot of things here which I personally am attracted to. The entire Mattel setup for the He-Man just blew my mind. The She-Ra exhibit is also really, really cool. There's just so many things this year that are way different from each and every year. And I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the idea that this is the 50th anniversary of Comic-Con. I could be wrong, but that's usually why they celebrate things like this, with special releases, lots of different exclusives, and just a plethora of things for people to take in over these next five days. Four days, really, but I'm counting the preview day, which we're doing right now. You really have to be here to experience this. And unfortunately, it really is incredibly difficult to get tickets right now. If you do have... <sighs> unfortunately, it's going to be incredibly difficult to do this going forward. Hopefully, as things get back to normal, we'll be able to, uh, you know, gather once again and go to huge comic conventions, anime conventions, and just gather again to share the love of comics, the anime, and geek culture. And food, accommodations, and finally, some of the things that you're going to pick up over the weekend. You're looking at well over 10 grand US just to experience this. But I gotta tell you, 
if this is going to be your first time doing this, you're really in for a treat. It's just insane. I think I was exaggerating there. I don't think it's actually $10,000 to actually do the whole thing, but it is quite expensive. You do have to set aside a little bit of money to get the, the full experience. But I think on a budget, you can still have a lot of fun. So this is the mostly the, complex, the comic areas. We see Boom Studios here. I believe uh, this is the Hot Toys exhibits. These are amazing. Sideshow Collectibles Hot Toys. Oh no, these are Hot Toys. Oh my god. These are crazy. These are Hot Toys. I thought it was Sideshow. Wow. Take a look at all these, all these Hot Toys in one place. It's incredible. The entire Avengers team from the final scene. Uh, of course, Sans um, Black Widow there, but she was there in spirit. Yep. There's Dex making his cameo appearance. What a camera oh, hog! That Spider-Man looks pretty cool. That Spider-Man looks incredible. I like the cloth. Really? Yeah, but you have to come close. Hot toys no, are no. simply incredible. Oh my god! Try over here. So at the time, I didn't realize, but that's a piece of uh, the Vulture's uh, arm. His uh, sorry, his uh, his wing. It's very cool to see that. Shows all the additional accessories in the bottom there. It's beautiful. Ah, uh, the Mark II. There's the Mark III, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And all the... I believe those are Sideshow collectible Infinity Gauntlets and Power Gauntlets, if I'm not mistaken. Those are crazy. I remember... Uh, Jordan and myself got into a bit of an argument as to uh, how much each of these were because I think that yep. he was he was kind of like taken aback by how much you know the tr the full replica was. I think that he had found out earlier that the the Hasbro version was coming out, and I thought I think he thought it was only going to be you know one hundred fifty dollars, one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars. Yeah, these ones are these ones are crazy expensive. Oh, it looks so get, tiny from the top. You've got to get it as close as you can. It looks so tiny from the top. These things are huge, guys. Like, if you want to talk about a full-size Hulk um, or Thanos uh, uh, Infinity Gauntlet, look no further. So, now we're on to Artist Alley, which is one of my favorite places uh, to visit at Comic-Con. Some real talented artists. Obviously, we have a lot of talented artists here in Toronto, but it's wonderful to see different types of art styles in a different part of the world, especially at Comic-Con. One of the things I really appreciate about Comic-Con is the fact that they still support local comic creators. This entire section is dedicated to a lot of the comic creators who are here and don't have support from like bigger publishers or anything like that. The fact that Comic-Con still allows for people to actually do these things and actually have crafts here, it's really amazing. And it really makes me feel good that people are still able to create and have booths here for their basic crafts and, you know, little fan art and things like that. It's really, it's really quite amazing. At a time where a lot of uh, shows are starting to crack down on fan art and art which is not, you know, uh, sanctioned by, by the actual companies. It's really heartwarming to see that creators can still actually do the kind of things they want to do, especially represented here at Comic-Con. <coughs> Some amazing artwork that was on display. Looking back at it now, I, I really wish I had spent more time at uh, these booths. Some of the guys here, you know, put their heart and soul into the work that they do, and it was really refreshing to actually see new styles and new different types of artwork all gathered in one place. Lots of fun. Wow. Well, that's it for the preview day. Oh man, way too much excitement for one evening. <laughs> we got on a plane. Guys, this was preview day, so it was only uh, a three hour preview. I believe it was six o'clock until eleven o'clock. And yeah, for those four hours it was it was incredible. It was it was crazy. Yeah, so guys, this was this was this was a lot of fun. 
just to be able to get on the show floor, see some of the great exhibits, the small preview that we were able to do. But it was it was it was a continual another four days of just sensory overload. We haven't even seen the cosplay that goes on at Comic Con. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this look back at San Diego Comic Con 2019 preview day. Please join us again as we look at the next episode when we look at San Diego Comic Con day one. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please do leave me a like. It really helps me out. If you have any comments or suggestions on anime, cartoons, toys, collectibles, or anything else you'd like me to review, please leave that in the comment section below and consider subscribing. This helps YouTube to realize I'm doing a good job and you guys enjoy my work. Well, guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. Geek Proud.